I gave ChatGPT a simple UI design and asked it to write Swift UI code. No tools, no plugins, just prompts. In this video, you will see how well it translates design into code, uh, where it struggles and how you can guide it step by step to build polished UI faster than ever. And if you're into coding with AI and learning specifically Swift UI with AI, go ahead and check out the link in the description about Swift UI Prompt Camp. There's a huge discount for the first size students. More on this later in the video. Now, today we are going to talk about how, uh, let's say, ChatGPT can turn a simple uh, image UI into code. So this is what I have prepared uh, for today. It's basically uh, just a, a, a version uh, of uh, the App Store. There we go. We can see in the actual tab bar over here. And let's just give this for ChatGPT and let's see what it's going to do with it. Let's see the code. We are also going to add it into our Xcode project. And then uh, most probably it will not just do this automatically. We are going to tweak it a little bit and I'm just going to do some comments on it. Uh, let's just open up ChatGPT. And uh, yeah, first of all, before we do that, uh, many of you most probably are just going with the default uh, 4.0. Go ahead and switch to uh, 4.0 mini high or even 4.1. One, as you can see, great for quick coding and analysis, great at coding and visual reasoning. So let's do this for this particular one. And by the way, inside SwiftUI Prompt Camp, I give you hundreds of these kind of tips and of course, a, a, a system of how you can uh, use ChatGPT prompting to your advantage in uh, prompting SwiftUI, learning SwiftUI and uh, working with SwiftUI. So first of all, let's just add this image in. And let me just drag and drop it in. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is just add a simple prompt. Now, this is really basic, by the way. Uh, in SwiftUI Prompt Camp, we're going to learn actually how to better prompt a GPT for these type of situations. Uh, let's just hit uh, return over there and let's just see. Please give me the SwiftUI code for this UI. You can see it's going to think, translating UI to Swift UI. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so let's just see. Here's the self contained Swift UI implementation that closely mimics the App Store games tab you showed. Uh, yeah, it's really nice that uh, it uh, recognized it. You can drop your own assets, images, you know, the images into your Xcode asset catalog or swap the async image URL uh, wherever you'd like. Okay, so let's take a look at this code. We have the category. Yeah, it's really nice that it starts off with the models. We have uh, the game. Uh, sample categories. Uh, we have kids, word, casual sports, uh, icon. Uh, yeah, most probably I can already tell that these SF symbols are really great background color. Okay, uh, great. What's going on with the comma? Yeah, great. So we have these categories and trending games uh, and must play games and then the content view. We have the tab view, which is really nice text. And, uh, you know, for all the others, it just added just a simple text because, you know, we're not going to actually can't see that on the screenshot. And then the games view. Nice. Games. So we have the selected category. That's all OK. And then navigation view. Now, uh, it's just going to use navigation view. Uh, it's not using navigation stack. Again, uh, you do need to have a proper prompting that it should use the latest uh, API, like navigation stack. Again, more on that inside SwiftUI prompt can go ahead and check out the link in the description. So we have two scroll views, kind of looks okay. And then the category pill, trending card, uh, yeah, there's a lot to uncover here. Game row uh, and the preview. Okay, and very nice. It has the uh, some uh, st uh, text of how it's uh, structured. Let's take a look at it. Let's copy this code and let's put it right into Xcode. So I have prepared right over here uh, a vanilla code template. There we go. It's right over here. So uh, let me just open up Canvas. Most probably Canvas uh, will do. 
and let's see how it looks like. SwiftUI Prompt Camp is now open and it's built for devs who want to learn SwiftUI smarter, not harder. Forget the endless playlists and passive tutorials. This camp teaches you how to actually think in SwiftUI by learning to prompt AI like a pro. It's not about copying code. It's about building faster, solving bugs instantly and gain real confidence with ChatGPT as your coding partner. Join me live on Zoom for four weeks of focused high impact sessions. By the end, you'll walk away with a real skill set, a repeatable learning system and a full control over your Swift UI growth. First five students get in for just $199. That's 90% of the regular $2,000 price. Seats are limited. Tap the link below to claim yours now. Okay, so uh, let's make it a little bit larger so we can see. Of course, it just uses the uh, today games. For some reason, uh, there is no SF symbol, I guess, uh, for the one that it has chosen. But let's go for games. Really nice. So let's just do a comparison real quick. So here we go. Let me just open this up and move it right over here to the side. Let's just see that. There we go. Okay, so games, which is fine. Uh, it did not add in any uh, profile, but that's fine. Kids, let's just see if this actually works. It actually works really nice. And we can tap on them really nice. Of course, it's not going to switch, but uh, that's, that's okay for now. And then uh, happening now, uh, Township, it just kind of missed this part. It has uh, this image, which is fine. Let's see if it's just scrollable. It is not scrollable. It, it did not recognize that it should be scrollable right over here. Must play games. Uh, Roblox, again, uh, not recognizing that this uh, should be scrollable, but it did recognize that it should be scrollable all the way up. Okay. Uh, I think this is fine. Uh, let's just tweak this a little bit. So uh, let's just see uh, about the SF symbol because I, I can't see the SF symbol. So uh, let's just, let me just copy uh, my prompt out and just paste it into ChatGPT. So please use SF symbols, rounded corners, padding and dark mode support because let's just see if there is dark mode support. I don't think it is. Yeah, as you can see, there is no uh, dark mode support. Let's just see if uh, it can fix it. Let's uh, send that away. It's thinking, updating the Swift UI desires. Okay, so uses SF symbols for all icons, applies rounded corners everywhere. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Add sensible padding. Leveraging dynamic system colors so it automatically adapts to lark and dark mode. Yes. So let's just see uh, when it, it's going to finish this. Scroll down. It's done. Okay. So let's copy it out and let's just paste it in. Let's just move a little bit. There we go. Uh, let's paste everything over here. So you can see category and all of that, it did not really change. Let's just wait for this. Uh, there is, yeah, two previews. Let me just remove this one. Okay, so it did not fix the games uh, uh, icon, which is uh, a shame. Uh, yeah, did it do anything actually? Well, it removed the coloring over here. Uh, yeah, this uh, actually, which I prefer, which is better in my opinion, it is the scrolling. It's really hard to do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. Tapping on a button. Yeah, it's, it's quite over there. Let's see what it did with, uh, dark mode. So let's check on dark mode. First of all, it's fine over here and then color scheme, dark appearance. Hmm. It did not work on dark appearance. It did do well. Yeah, there we go. It was just on the, that thought. Yeah, really nice. I was a little bit confused, but uh, now it is fine. And I think this is this is great. So just with a single prompt, it is really great. Okay, so let's move even further. Um, 
Uh, let's just take a look at this on an iPhone SE. So, or let's just see more iPhone SE. So the smallest one. What I usually do is just take a look at, or let's just go for the iPad version. Let's see how the iPad version looks like. Uh, yeah, it's loading. <laughs> there we go okay so yeah the preview is loading really slowly uh, let me just add my prompt over here make the layout look good on both ipad and iphone 15 pro max so let's see if that is going to change anything because you know the ipad is a really really uh, big screen and the iphone is a smaller one yeah it is just doing something so i can see that it's just uh, uh changing the game's view and uh, hopefully only that one. Let me just see. Category pill to trending card, game row. So basically only the UI. Okay, so let's just copy this out. And uh, let's see, let's paste it in. Yeah, as you can see, if we just go into games over here. Yeah, it's it's just hidden away in the in the tab bar over here. It's it's not what we are expecting. So let me just um, take all of this all the way up to the games view, content view. Let's just scroll down games view, and paste it in there. We don't need to import Swift UI. And yeah, basically that's it. Let's just see it. Okay, games. Mm, still not doing the same and as you can see it's 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 i believe it would look better if it were not on the sidebar over here but yeah it did not work as expected let's just see this on the iphone 16 pro so basically the iphone let's just see that yeah it, it looks okay so yeah not really good when I asked it uh, this one. And finally, uh, let's talk a little bit about animation. Let's see what it is going to do when I ask it to, can you animate the appearance of the header cards with a fade in load? Let's just see that. And by the way, these are really like basic prompts. More uh, elaborate prompting is needed to actually make this work as you can see it's 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 a hit and miss uh, in our case so and we are going to learn that inside swift to our prompt can take a look at the link in the description let's just see this it's just going to uh, rewrite the games view yeah only that uh okay so uh, uh yeah let me just see uh must play grid etc so what we changed, no changes needed inside trending card itself. This wraps, wraps it in an opacity. I'm just going to uh, tell it, uh, give me the full games view. So I can just simply uh, copy and paste it in. Okay, let's just see. Okay, let me just copy it and then Go and change the games view only. There we go. I'm going to remove the preview provider. And let's see. Let's take a look at it if it's animating it in. It did. It did animate it. Well, we don't have the image actually, but we can, or we did see uh, it inside the text. Let me just see if I just uh, tap away. No, because you know, uh, whenever the first on the first appearance, but this is fine. This is okay. Whenever the tab appears, it is going to be animating it. In. I'm really, really satisfied with this one. Of course, you might want to go into the details of the code, but today's tutorial is all about, you know, learning how to better prompt. Now, there's also, of course, better ways of doing this. Go ahead and check out SwiftUI PromptCamp. A 90% discount link is down in the description.